today, we're going to put the finishing touches on our triplanar projection shader. Let's go. So in the last couple of videos, we've been creating a shader that does triplanar projection, meaning it's projecting our sample uh, in the X, Y, and Z axes onto our model instead of using UV coordinates. If you haven't seen the last three videos in the series, it's best to go back and watch those first because we're going to be building on those today. And if you haven't seen the previous videos in the series, uh, you may not understand what's going on. So last week we got our shader to a pretty good spot. It's projecting on the X, the Y, and the Z axes. And we have these nice blending zones uh, where the three axes are being blended together. But there are a couple of things that we can do to improve our projections and push it a little bit further. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. To illustrate the first two issues that we're going to be tackling, uh, it's best if we switch our uh, example texture from this cobblestones texture uh, to, to more of a, a numbered grid. So that's what I'm going to be doing first. Let's come down here and I'm just going to type uh, UV and I'm going to use this uh, UV grid small texture to illustrate the issues that we're going to be running into. Okay, so I've swapped out my cobblestones texture for this uh, UV grid texture. And the first thing that we can notice is that <laughs> our texture is upside down. Uh, you can see these numbers here on the texture and uh, the numbers are upside down. So the first thing that we need to do is tackle that issue. So if we take a look and the two, the two uh, projection axes where we're having this problem are the X, which is uh, coming from the side here and the Y, which is coming from the front. So this texture projection here and this texture projection here. And uh, the axis that is uh, inverted is the vertical one. So if we take a look here, we can see that uh, for our absolute world position, it's our B that's inverted in both of these cases. So if we want to solve this, uh, it's pretty easy. We just need to flip our B upside down. So I'm going to take our absolute world position here and I'm going to add a multiply node. And then I'll add a vector three. And here we just need to multiply our B by negative one. So R and G are going to be one. Multiplying by one does nothing, uh, but multiplying by negative one uh, flips something. So we're flipping our B channel here in both cases. And so I'm just going to multiply um, our world position by one, one, negative one. And as soon as we wire that in, now you can see that because we've flipped uh, the second component of our X projection and our Y projection, now we have numbers that are no longer upside down. All right, what's next? Well, if we look at our numbers here again, uh, you can see the numbers look correct on this side. But if I go around to the other side of the sphere here, the numbers are inverted. And there's a pretty obvious answer to why that is. Uh, we're using the same projection on both sides. Uh, on one side, our um, polygons are facing one way, but on the other side, they're facing the opposite direction. But since we're doing the projection straight through the surface, it gets projected the same on both sides. And if we want our numbers to come out uh, reading correctly on one side and on the other side, uh, we need to take one of the sides and flip our horizontal axis. So how do we do that exactly? Well, that is going to uh, require us to use a new node that I don't know if I've talked about before, but it's called sign. S-I-G-N sign, not uh, S-I-N-E sign. S-I-G-N sign. And what this node does is it returns either a zero or an, uh, either a one or a negative one 
depending on the sign of the input. So if I give the, the sign node a negative number as an input, it's gonna return a negative one. And if I give it a positive number, it's gonna return a positive one. So let's wire our vertex normal into the sign node. And this is gonna give us, and let's uh, just temporarily, let's wire this into our color output to see what we're gonna get here. So what we're gonna get here is either a one or a negative one for the X, the Y, and the Z of our vertex normal here. Well, let's break it down just to make it easier to understand what's going on here. Let's break this down using a component mask and just take a look at one channel at a time. So if we take a look at our red channel or our X, the X component of our uh, vertex normal. So projected in the X direction, you can see that I have positive on this side and negative on this side. Let's compare that to the results that we're getting uh, on our triplanar projection. So I'm getting positive on this side here. And our numbers are actually backwards on this side where I'm getting positive. So I'm getting um, the white value from sine on this side of our X projection. And it's the side where our numbers are actually uh, reversed, right? So let's take a look at uh, the y of our sine value. So in a y in our y projection, we're getting uh, positive on this side and negative on this side. And let's take a look at the results of our triplanar projection here. So it looks like we're getting um, numbers that are correct on the white side here and numbers that are reversed on the black side here. All right, one more. Let's take a look at the Z of our uh, world space normals. So we're getting positive on the top and negative on the bottom. And if we look at our projection again, our numbers are facing the right way on the top and they're inverted on the bottom. Okay, so what we learned from this little exercise is that our sign um, is returning a positive where the numbers are correct, and it's returning negative where the numbers are reversed, except for the X projection. So we need to fix that, and to fix that, we can just add a multiply and add a vector three, and we're gonna multiply by negative one, one and one. All right, so now this sign data is ready to help us uh, flip our uh, the UV coordinates that we're using for our projections in the X, the Y, and the Z. Uh, let's just move some of this stuff out of the way so we have a little bit more space. And then we're gonna move these guys back a little bit so we have a little bit more space here. And so now the next thing that we need to do is for each of our three projections, we need to invert our horizontal axis using our sign information. So let's split our sign information out into uh, the X, Y, and Z. So I'll take the X and I'll take the Y And one more, we'll take the Z. And now for each of these, we're going to be multiplying by uh, the horizontal axis, which is the first one in the row. And we wanna make sure that we don't do anything to the vertical axis. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is for each of these, I'm just going to append a one to them. So I'll add an append vector for each of these. And now I'm just going to append a one. So I'll append a one to my X, my Y, 
and my Z. Okay, now I need to multiply the result of this by my X projection, the result of this by my Y projection, and the result of this by my Z projection. So I'm just going to add a new multiply here and multiply it by my X sign. And now I'll add a multiply here and multiply it by my Y sign. And I'll add a multiply down here at the bottom and multiply that by my Z sign. So uh, just, just a little bit of a recap here. You can see that I'm figuring out which direction my normal is facing. And that gives me a negative or a positive value depending on which direction that it's facing. And then depending on the, the facing value, I'm going to flip the, or I'm going to invert the direction that my horizontal axis of my projection is facing uh, based on which side of the sphere I'm on in the X, Y, and Z directions. So now that I've done that, if we take a look at our sphere here, you can see that our numbers are right way up on this side. And if we go around to the other side, they're right way up over here as well. And the same thing for this axis and also for the top and the bottom. So all three of my projections are being flipped on the opposite side so that my numbers read correctly uh, no matter which direction I'm looking at them from. All right, one thing that I forgot to mention is uh, we've done all of this and there's a little bit of math involved that, you know, there's some there's some additional multiplies that we have to do, uh, first of all, to make sure that our projections are uh, right way up. And then second, to uh, make sure that our projections are inverted, uh, depending on which side of the sphere that we're on. This is a problem if we're using a texture like this, that's a grid that has values that need to be uh, correctly projected. projected. But if we're using a, a texture like our cobblestones texture uh, that doesn't have a definite direction, we definitely don't need to do all of this and we can leave our shader a little bit more simple. Uh, instead of doing this extra math, we can just leave it the way that it was at the beginning of the video uh, and we could get away with that and make the shader a little bit cheaper. But if we want to uh, have a more high quality projection uh, that's correct for projected things like text or numbers or values that have a definite direction, uh, then we need to go through the extra trouble of flipping things around so that our orientation is correct. All right, so we added a little bit of polish to our texture projection. The next thing that I wanna do is show you how to turn this into um, a material function so that you can actually project a whole material uh, and not just a single texture. So the next thing that I wanna do is show you how to do that. All right, the first thing that we need to do is come down here to our drawer and I'm gonna go to my materials folder, maybe just come down here to the bottom and I'm gonna right click and go to our materials and textures and I'm gonna select a new material function. This is different from a material. A material function is, um, it, it, it creates a new node that I can add to material. So I'm gonna create a material function and I'm just gonna call this uh, triplanar projection. And I'm gonna open up this function. And now, since I've already done the work of creating this shader, all I need to do really is just copy all of these nodes and paste them into my function. So that was pretty easy. <laughs> and now I can just expose the output here uh, or plug the results of my uh, projection into the output. Now there are a couple of things that are missing. I need to expose some parameters that will allow me to tweak this function from outside and control a few of the things. Like for example, right now um, the texture is hard coded to this grid and I wanna be able to use this function and give it different textures. And so what I'm gonna do is right click here and pick input, and I'm gonna add a function input node, and this is gonna allow me to pass in data from outside the function. 
So I've added my function input node, and now I need to tell it what kind of input I want. And in this case, I want to give it a texture 2D. So I'm going to set my input type to function input texture 2D. And now I'm going to wire this input into the texture slot of each of my texture samples. So what this is going to allow me to do is pass a texture into my function to use in each of these three samples. And if I want to be able to see what it looks like, I can actually come in here and add a, a texture object for the, the texture preview. So here's my texture object. I can pass that into the preview pin. And now when I'm looking at the function here uh, by itself, I can see a preview of what that's gonna look like. Now this isn't strictly required, um, but as you saw there, uh, if I don't have this preview object connected, it does give me this error uh, missing preview connection for function input in. Uh, this won't prevent my shader from compiling, but it will prevent me from being able to see a preview of the function uh, when I'm looking at it uh, here in the editor. So it's nice to hook something up here. Now in my case, <laughs> I think this default texture here is extremely ugly. So I'm just gonna go back to my old tried and true cobblestones texture as the preview. All right, the other thing that I wanna be able to control is the scale of, um, of my projection. So I'm gonna add a new input And for this one, we're going to use a function input vector three. And I'm gonna give it a default value of one, one, one. We'll wire that in as the preview. And then I can click use preview as the default here. I'm gonna actually do that for my other input as well. And now I just need to uh, multiply my absolute world position by my scale values here uh, in order to allow my projection to be scaled by uh, this input value. All right, so we've created our, um, our material function here. Let's go ahead and save it and switch back to our regular material and add the function to this graph to see what we get. So we'll open our content drawer again Here's our triplanar projection uh, material function. You can see that the material function has this uh, light blue color instead of green, and that's an indicator that it's a different kind of object. I can't use this as a material all by itself, but when I grab it and drag and drop it into another material, it becomes its own little node. And uh, one thing that I'm noticing here when I drop it in is that I didn't name my inputs very well. This is called in one, and this is called in. Uh, so let's switch back to uh, our inputs here and actually give them good names. I'm gonna call this one texture, and I'm gonna call this one scale. So we'll save this again and switch back to here. And now you can see we've got a nice uh, scale input and a nice texture input. Well, if we take uh, the result of this material function and we plug it into our base, now you can see that I'm getting my cobblestones projected. And if I wanna project my grid instead, I can just add a texture object and here in the texture object I can select my UV grid texture and pass it into uh, the texture slot of my new function and now I'm getting a grid uh, just like I did before if I plug uh, my big graph in that's all of these nodes plugged in or if I plug this node in, I get the same exact result. 
I can also add a vector 3 value here. And uh, we'll maybe give it some, some other values like 4, 4, 4. So now our grid's going to be tiled four times across our one meter space. The other value that I might want to expose is uh, how big these blend zones are. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we come over here, uh, this value here is what we're using to raise our vertex normal to a power. So this is going to control our blend zone. So we need to add another input. So here is our function input. For this one, the type is going to be a scalar or just a single numerical value. And I'm going to wire that in here. I think I'll maybe give it a default value of eight. And then I'll check the uh, use preview value as default. So now we have an input for uh, controlling the the power value there. I need to give this uh, a name. We'll maybe call this blend sharpness, <laughs> something like that. All right, we'll save this and switch back to our material. Now you can see that I have uh, this blend sharpness value and I can pass a constant into that. And if we want our blending zones to be really sharp, I can pass in a value of uh, say 64. Now you can see that uh, we're getting uh, significantly less blending along the borders of our projections. All right, so that is how you create a material function that does a triplanar projection. And the nice thing about having the function, um, I don't need all of this anymore. Now I can just use the function itself. And if I wanted to project multiple textures, I could just copy this guy and paste it. And we can project uh, multiple objects just like that. So I could do a color map. I could use. A, I could do a roughness, a specular, metallic. Now, if I wanted to do a normal, I would need to. There's some special considerations that we need to take into consideration for sure. Uh, and we're out of time this week, but next week I'm going to go into the details of how to do triplanar projection for a normal map. So before we finish out today, let's switch over to Unity and I'll show you the same uh, techniques and how to do this, these triplanar touch-ups in Unity. All right, so here we are in Unity and we're picking up right where we left off last week, except the one thing that I've changed here is I went ahead and I set our textures to be uh, our grid texture instead of our cobblestones texture like we had before. And Unity is gonna have a couple of uh, issues that are slightly different from Unreal because of the fact that it's Y up instead of Z up. And some of the axes are inverted, I think. So um, what we can see here uh, when we're looking at our object is uh, instead of the um, front and side projections being upside down like in Unreal, uh, we have one of our projections that is actually projected sideways. And luckily for us, that's really easy to fix. So what we can do is come up here to our swizzle node where we're, so this is our X projection that's coming from the side. This is our Y projection that's coming from the top and our Z projection that's coming from the front. So our X projection that's coming from the side, if we want to fix this uh, 90 degree rotation, all we have to do is swap the Z and the Y uh, components here. So I'm just going to type ZY instead of YX. And now you can see that it's been rotated 90 degrees and our projection is fixed. Um, but if we look at the other side of our sphere, you can see that uh, just like in Unreal, Unity is suffering from the problem where our texture is being projected through the sphere. So on the reverse side of the sphere, uh, our text is inverted. 
So let's go ahead and fix that in Unity just like we did in Unreal by adding a sine node. So I'm gonna wire my uh, normal vector into my sine. And that's gonna return a negative one or a one depending on if uh, each of the three components of the normal is either positive or negative. Now, just like I did in Unreal, I'm gonna have to multiply my sine node um, by one, one, negative one, um, because in the case of Unity, the Z axis is inverted here. So I'm gonna have to flip that data before I can use it. So now I have my, um, my flip values and the next thing that I need to do is make vector twos out of each of these. Uh, so I'm gonna add a split node here so that I can split that into its uh, X, Y, and Z components. And then for each of these, I'm going to make a vector two. And in the second component of my vector two, I'm just going to add a hard-coded value of one because when I flip these axes, I only want to flip the, the horizontal uh, component and not the vertical one. So I'm going to put a value of one there so that I multiply the vertical one by one, which is basically just leaving it alone. And then this is my Z projection flip value. Now I have these three flip values and I just need to multiply my X, Y, and Z projections by the flip values so that on the opposite side, uh, they'll be flipped horizontally. So I'm just gonna move these back just a little bit to give myself some more space. And then for each of these, I'm going to add a multiply and then wire my X flip and my Y flip. And finally, my Z flip. And now for each of these on the back side of the sphere, I've flipped the data horizontally so that the numbers read correctly on both the front and the back. And it's even working correctly on the top and the bottom. Great. So now in Unity, all that we have left to do is to uh, make a subgraph out of this. So just like we did in Unreal, I'm gonna take all of these nodes and copy them. Well, let's save our asset first. And now we'll bring up our project window here. I'll right click in here and pick Create, Shader Graph, Subgraph. And maybe we'll call this SG Triplanar. And so now, just like we did in Unreal, uh, in Unreal it's called uh, a material function. In Unity it's called a subgraph. I'm gonna open up this subgraph and I'm gonna go ahead and paste our uh, shader graph nodes into it. And now finally we need to add our parameters. In Unity we add parameters using the blackboard. So I'm gonna turn the blackboard on and then I'm gonna hit this little plus button, which allows me to add parameters. The first parameter that I want to add is a texture 2D. And so we'll just call this our texture. And I can drag my parameter into my graph and drop it. And I wanna uh, add my texture object to each of my texture samplers. So I'm gonna open this up and wire my texture sam or wire my texture object into each of my samplers. I'm gonna to have to open them up to, to do that. So I'll just wire that into the texture 2D slot of my samplers. And then this object needs a default. And in order to do that, I need to open up my graph inspector. So here's where I can specify my default texture. And in this case, I'm just going to pick my, my cobblestones texture. And now you can see that my texture is uh, defaulting to using cobblestones. All right, I can close these, close these down again. The next parameter that I need to add is, uh, let's add uh, the blend sharpness. And that's gonna be a float parameter. Let's call it blend 
sharpness. And I can drag that into my scene and I can wire it in right here uh, in my power node. And the default for my blend sharpness, I'm gonna give it a default of eight over here in my graph inspector. And then the last parameter that I want to add is my projection scale. So let's add a vector three for that. Call it projection scale and drag this into my graph. And this is going to go right here, projection scale multiplied by uh, my position. All right, and we want to make sure that we give our projection scale a default of one, not zero. <laughs> and so once we have our parameters added, uh, now we're good to use this subgraph. So I'm going to go back to my test triplanar projection material and maybe hide some of these windows. Just give myself a little bit more space. And now I'm going to drag in my SG triplanar uh, subgraph here. And you can see that I've got my uh, parameters exposed. I have my texture slot, uh, my blend sharpness, and my projection scale. And um, so here's my preview. And if I just wire my SG triplanar in now, Now you can see that my subgraph is, is doing its job and I can increase the sharpness and I can increase uh, the number of times that I'm tiling the projection and I've created this subgraph just like I did in Unreal. Created this subgraph that will do the same thing as um, all, of these, all of these graph nodes here. So I could use this to project multiple textures. All right, so that's how you do it in Unity. I hope you've enjoyed um, these tutorial sessions on how to create triplanar uh, projections. Uh, just like I said um, a few minutes ago, next week we're gonna be focusing on how to do triplanar projections of normal maps. Uh, that's kind of complicated because typically normal maps are associated with the UVs on the model. But when you project them in world space, they don't have any UVs to be associated with. So um, their orientations can get a little bit tricky when the model rotates, uh, when the UVs are flipped and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna show you how to handle uh, all of those use cases next week. So I hope you come back for that. And in the meantime, have a great week, everybody.